<coughs> so the title of your talk tomorrow is You Are a Buyer or a Seller. Um, so why do you see M&A as you know, such a viable way to create value for most distributors? Well, we see it as a way to create value, and also it's becoming, we think, more, more and more an imperative, of an imperative. And it gets down to what's happening in terms of the consolidation of the industry and the, uh, how aggressive these strategics are really kind of being out there. Yeah, we talked uh, last year, actually, at the same conference about hiding under your balance sheet. Well, a lot of distributors were very happy, and rightly so. They survived 2008, survived 2009. And now we're saying, okay, now I want to improve my balance sheet, maybe take out a dividend, make some small investments in the business. I want to keep on growing. Um, what's really changed in this environment in the last 18 months, maybe 24 months, is the level of acquisitions. And I just quoted a couple of numbers from just two months in the year, but the level of acquisitions continues to increase in distribution. So what does that mean for, you know, for your readership, readership and your viewership? The competitive environment can literally change overnight. So you could be sitting as a distributor of product and services X and have a pretty good understanding of your competitive environment and your served geography, your served market. But now we have to really step back and think about what happens if one of the big consolidators, and this, those consolidators can be strategics or we call quasi-strategics, which are private equity-backed platforms that are making acquisitions, come in and buy a competitor that maybe heretofore was very weak in your area. And now all of a sudden, that company is part of a much larger entity that has much stronger IT, better opportunities for your people in terms of growth, better ability to serve customers on a nationwide or regional or super regional basis with key account type programs. Um, they have a, a much stronger vendor uh, importance. They have stronger rebates, so their cost position is better, they're more efficient in operations, on and on and on. So that literally can change overnight. So one of the things that we're talking about here again at the APIC conference is how do you prepare for it? And, and the, the message that we believe very strongly in is as a distributor, it's no longer just um, nice to be making acquisitions or can add value to make acquisitions. We really see as consolidation increases over the next handful of years that you need to be a buyer and to become bigger and stronger yourself or maybe consider being part of a larger uh, you know, enterprise going forward in some form or fashion. It's just not as safe to be sitting as kind of a smaller, maybe small to mid-sized distributor anymore. Talk a little bit more, if you would, about why it's important for a distributor to link M&A to their strategy. And also, uh, would that be the case even if a distributor doesn't have immediate plans to sell? Uh, interesting. A lot of distributors we talk to uh, will ask us about acquisitions or specific acquisitions. And the first thing we always try to take it back to, Angela, is what is your strategic plan? What's your strategic roadmap? Where are you trying to take your business? Because acquisitions for acquisitions sake alone, and just to grow to some scale and revenue, the entire APIC conference here, folks, is all about profit. You hear Randy McLean and all the other speakers here talking about revenue doesn't matter. Revenue is for ego. Um, you know, profitability and cash flow is really reality. So how do we get how do we get focused and stay focused on on you know, on the profitability and the key part of this? So acquisitions for acquisitions sake just don't make sense anymore. And some of the some of your readership may remember Tyco back in the nineties buying anything and everything you know, until they just kind of blew up. So we always go back and say, what's your strategic plan? What are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to expand geographically for certain reasons? Maybe you want to um, cover key accounts better. Or you want to be more market or industry specific to have better solutions for that specific industry. Um, maybe you're just trying to grow to some extent in a region to, be, to offer better opportunities for your people, your reason to be your competition. So what are you trying to accomplish? And always sit back and say, can I accomplish this best organically, investing myself and building it? That takes time and resources. And sometimes it's not just the resources and the cost of the resources, it's the time it takes to get there. If it's an imperative, it's a for example, in some distribution businesses, Angela, in some models, it's becoming more and more important to have a strong e-commerce capability. Well, if it takes two years to develop that internally, and you have the opportunity to make an acquisition in or around your space of a firm that has an extremely strong e-commerce platform, and you can then have the synergies in combining with that business, maybe you want to use that for an acquisition. So again, it depends on what are you trying to accomplish then determine whether you want to build it organically or you want to build it through acquisition.